because it says to simplify using order of operations. What would be the first thing we're supposed to do according to the order of operations? Who remembers what the order of operations are? Yes, PEMDAS. Now, according to that, what should I be looking at fixing first? What does the P stand for? What does the P stand for? Parentheses. So we need to clean up the stuff in the parentheses. That means we leave the stuff out of the parentheses alone. So this is still going to say two plus. Then we got to start working the parentheses. Okay, inside the parentheses, what would we do first? We have multiple things in there. What do we do first? Inside the parentheses. I see multiply and divide inside the parentheses. According to the rules, I do it like I see it. So what would I do first? I would do the multiply first, but it's not always multiply first. It's like you read it from left to right. So had they done something like four divided by two times six, if we rearranged it, the four divided by two would have come first, okay? so. Multiply and divide, it's not multiply and then divide all the time. It's multiply or divide like you read the sentence. In this case, the multiply came first. So what is that multiply equal to? Six times two equals what? Twelve. And then it says that we still have to do a division. So we have to put our divide symbol in here. Using our equation writer, we put our divide symbol in. And we still have the four. And we still have the exponent. Remember, the exponent is shift and the number six, arrow off it, and we still have the five. Okay, we have not finished cleaning up the parentheses. We have another step we have to take on. So, Again, we write the stuff we're not working with. The two is still here. The plus is still here. But we are dealing with that parentheses. What is 12 divided by 4? What is 12 divided by 4? 3. Then it says we're supposed to, all the rest of it staying the same, right? Okay. Have we fully and completely simplified the parentheses? Is what's inside the parentheses as good as it can get? Is what's inside the parentheses as good as it can get? Well, did we clean up the inside of the parentheses to as simple as it can get? The inside of the parentheses to as simple as it can get? Have we fully handled six times two divided by four? Yes. Okay, so the P is done. What was the next letter of PEMDAS again? E, what's the E stand for? What's the E stands for? Not equation. That does start with an E though. What does the E in PEMDAS stand for? What does the E in the PEMDAS stand for? Exponent. Okay. So do we have an exponent? 
Do we have something with an exponent? Does part of the problem have an exponent on it? Does part of our problem have an exponent on it? Exponents are those numbers in the sky. Does part of our problem have an exponent on it? A number in the sky? So no piece of our problem has an exponent, a number in the sky attached to it. Denise, please fix your camera. Oh, yes, we do have an exponent. So we have to go deal with that. But the two is still there. We're not changing that. And the plus is still there. We're just fixing that three to the second power, which means how much? What number is three to the second power? Nine, because the second power means times itself one time, so it'd be two threes, three times three. If I have five in the sky, it's three times three times three times three. It's not times two, it's times itself that many times. Okay, so do we have any more exponents? Do we have anything else that has an exponent on it? Anything else with an exponent on it? No. So now we go on to the next piece. Do we have any multiplying or dividing? Because we did the P, parentheses, we did the E, exponent. Now we're doing the multiply or divide as we read it. Do we have any multiplying or dividing left to do? Then we have adding or subtracting like we read it. Do we have adding or subtracting we need to do? Yes. Now, do we have adding and subtracting? No, what do we have? Just adding. So we're gonna just add it. Nine plus two plus five. What do we get? Because they're all the same function. So we can do them all at once. Nine plus two plus five, what do we get? Sixteen, and it's done. Done. Doing another one. Looking at the problem. What do we have to handle first? According to our order of operation. Looking at the problem. What do we have to handle first? According to our order of operations. No, that's the whole thing. I wanna know what do we have to handle first? We already know that it's PEMDOT. What do we have to handle first? The parentheses, and we look in the parentheses and inside the parentheses, I see two math operations. I see a subtract and I see a divide according to the order of operations. Which one of those has to come first? According to the rules, which one of those has to come first?
because it, we're still in PEMDAS, which one do we have to do first, the subtracting or the dividing? According to the rules of PEMDAS. Who has the power, the subtraction or the division? Who is mentioned first? The subtraction or the division? The division. So it's saying seven minus is still there. <clears throat> we cannot do the subtraction yet because according to PEMDAS, multiply and divide is more important than adding and subtracting. Okay, we have to handle that divide first. Even though it didn't come first in the parentheses, we have to do it according to the rules. And the rules do multiply and divide before adding and subtracting. So what is eight divided by four? To close it, shift six, exponent two, arrow off, minus three. Okay, is our parentheses all cleaned up? So we can move on. Is the parentheses as simple as we can get it? No. So we have to handle that parentheses still. It's not done. So nine minus. Do the math for the parentheses. What do we get? Do the math for the parentheses. What do we get? Five. Okay, so that says five. Close it. Shift six, second power, minus three. Now, is the parentheses completely cleaned up as good as we can get it? The insides as simple as it can be. Yes, so now we have to handle the exponent. Okay, now we have to handle the exponent. The nine minus is still there. Solve the exponent, what do we get? Solve the exponent, what do we get? Twenty-five. So nine minus twenty-five minus three. Okay. So now we're gonna do our next piece. Adding or subtracting, like we read it. Do we have adding or do we have subtracting? Do we have adding or subtract? We have subtracting. But we have to do it one piece at a time because they don't all have a minus sign on them. Okay. This is a positive nine. This is a negative 25. We have to handle that first. What is positive nine minus 25? Are they the same sign? Positive nine, negative 25, same sign? No. So what do we do when they're not the same sign? What's our process when they're not the same sign? How do we deal with the numbers when they're not the same sign? Subtract and keep the sign on the bigger one. So what are we gonna say the answer is? 25 take away nine, but what is its sign? What is its sign? Negative 16. So this says negative 16 and a negative three. Okay, so our final, final answer, when we pull those together, are those the same sign or are those different signs? Same sign. So what's our rule for same sign? Add 
Adam and Keep the sign that's there, not the sign of the bigger one this time, okay? When we're subtracting, we keep the sign for the bigger one. When we're, when we're adding, since they're both the same sign, we keep the sign they have, okay? So when they're opposite signs, subtract and keep the sign that's on the bigger one. When they're same sign, add and keep that sign. So what's my answer gonna be? What's our final, final, final answer going to be? Negative 19. Okay. All right. All right, so now we're going on to number three. Let's undo that. Let's undo. We're looking at the number, how many tiles would be in pattern five? So we need to figure out what's the pattern. We've done this before. What's the pattern? All right, first, okay. If we're looking at, remember, the figure numbers across the top, that's our X and our across the bottom is how many changing for the figure. So we need to know how many is in figure two. How many is in figure two? Eight. Okay. Eight. How many is in figure three? Eleven? Are we sure? Yep. Okay. How many is in figure four? Fourteen. Okay. Those are our Ys, right? We've done this before. Those are the Ys. So we need to find the change of the Y. The figure number is the Xs. So we need to find the change of X. How much is changing from one figure to the next? What am I gonna say is happening? Because this is figure two to figure three. So what's the change? Figure two to figure three. I didn't say tiles. I said figure. What is changing to go from a figure two to a figure three? Two to three, what's happening? We're adding one figure number. We're doing these X's at the top, guys. How about to figure three to figure four? How much are we adding in figure number? because we're doing our change of X first. What do I have to do to go from the number three to the number four? Add one. So our change of X's were one, adding one, to the figure number, adding one to the figure number because the X's are the figure number. The Y's are the number of tiles. So what's changing for our number of tiles to go from figure two to figure three? What's changing for our number of tiles to go from figure two to figure three?
adding three. Okay. So how about from figure three to two to, yeah, three to four. How many tiles got added in to go from three, figure three to figure four? Because we're talking about our change of Y now, our tiles. Okay. So we've got our details so that we could figure stuff out. First, it says how many tiles are in one and five, and then what is the rule? And I find that that's backwards. You really should find the rule and then use it to find one and five. Okay. So what pieces do we need for the rule? What's our format for the rule look like? What's our format for the rule look like? I don't know why I have to keep repeating. Camera should be to your cheekbone. So your eyes show. Fix it. Yes, y equals mx plus b is our format. Now, we found some information to get us the M, right? We could solve the M right now. Our M would be what over what? How do we find M? All the time. How do we find M all the time? Slope is what? Okay. Change of Y divided by change of X. That's what we need to do. Do we have enough information to complete that process? Do we have a change of Y? Do we have a change of X? Do we have a change of Y and do we have a change of X? Yes, so we could find our slope. What is the change of Y? Positive three and we're dividing it by what is the change of X? Positive one. And for the rule, it would simplify to what number? According to simplify so we could put it in the rule. What would that become? So it goes in the rule. Three. Because positive three divided by positive one makes three. Okay. We need to figure out five. We need to figure out four. And we need to figure out a rule. Okay. So we know an M. We know an X and a Y. So we're going to solve for B. I am going to use this Y right here that we have eight tiles. I know that my M is three times my X, which is my figure number. My figure number is two. What I don't know is that B, I'm gonna figure that B out, okay? I'm gonna figure that B out. What is uh, three times two? Six, so this says eight 
equals six plus my beginning, right? Okay, I need to big zero, I need to big one. I need to get rid of what's with the B that shouldn't be there. How am I gonna do that? What needs to go? Because it's not a B. What needs to go? Because it's not a B. It's on the side with the B, but it's not B. On the same side as the B, but it's not a B. So we're doing our balance beam right now. We're doing this. What needs to go? Mm -hmm. Subtract six from both sides, yeah. If I subtract six from both sides, what does it tell me the B is worth? Minus six on the right. Whatever we do to the right, we have to do to the left. I need it too close to the edge, it's okay. Okay, so what's B have to be worth to make this happen? Do the math. B has to equal two, yeah. So B equals two. That way we don't have to backtrack and that's a pain. So we're gonna pull our stuff together. We know an M now, we know a B, so Y equals, what was our N? What was our N? 3X, what did we just figure out the B was? What am I gonna put after the 3X for my B? I need a sign. plus two. Okay, so we've got a rule, right? We're gonna use that rule for our figure one and our figure five. Figure one would be x equals one, figure five equals x equals five. So we have to figure out when y equals, if x is one, And we have to figure out when, y, when x equals five, because that's what figure one and figure five would be. X, figure numbers are the x. So I'm using that rule I just figured out and I'm solving. Okay, let's do our first one. What am I gonna say? Y equals three times one. Doing our math, three. And then it says we're supposed to add two to it to get a final answer. So what are we gonna say the final answer is? Y equals five. Okay, and then we have to figure out the second one. They said figure one and figure three. So I'm figuring out figure, figure one and figure five. I'm figuring out figure five now. Do the math. What are we gonna say? Three times five. Three times five. 15, and we're supposed to plus two more. So the final is what? What are we gonna say the final answer is? Okay. And now we have to answer their question. We've done our math, now we have to answer their question. And I'm gonna to have to put it up here because I write so big. It is what it is. There will be, if you can fit it at the bottom, go ahead. Um, what did we say for the first one? Five tiles. And there's it. 
in figure one and 17 tiles in figure five. Okay, so the circle of the equation and our sentence we just wrote, both of those things are the answer to number three. So for myself, just to remind me that this goes with this problem. But if you could fit it at the bottom, then fit it at the bottom. Okay. Is this particular question number four different than what we just did for question number three? Is the process actually different? No. So we're going to do the same steps we just got done doing. We're going to find our change of X. We're going to find our number of tiles and then find our change of Y. Okay. All that same stuff. It's best if you just do it quickly and you don't think about it. So I have my change of X. What's changing when I go from one X to the next? X is figure number. So if I go from number one to number two, not tiles, literally, the number one to the number two, what's going to happen? What math do we have to go from number one to number two? Not tiles. We have to add one. Because remember, the X's are about the figure number, the literally figure one, figure two. Not how many tiles are in them. Figure two to figure three, how much did the X change? Also a plus one, right? So they're not asking you to look at tile numbers yet. Now we have to go get tile numbers figured out. Before we can do change of Y, we have to know how many were originally there. So how many were in figure one? How many tiles are in figure one? Seven. How many tiles are in figure two? I'm gonna be sneaking go like this. How many tiles are in figure two? Figure two equals how many tiles? 11. Figure three equals how many tiles? Kind of sneaky, huh? Figure three equals how many tiles? Fifteen. Now we're going to go figure out how that's changing. Okay. How does it change from the number seven to the number 11? What's going on? To go from the number seven to the number 11. What's going on? Okay, we added four. All right, then we have to go from the number 11 to the number 15. What's going on? Adding four again. So do we have what we need to say that we have a change of Y? Yes. This plus four is the change of Y that adding four each time, the adding one each time is the change of X. So I'm ready to go get this slope formula, right? So I'm gonna go grab it. I'm not gonna retype it. I'm gonna go copy and paste it then. It's, it's silly to rewrite it. Okay, so what are we gonna say in our slope formula? What's the change of Y for this problem? What's the change of Y for this problem? Adding four 
over adding one simplifies to four. Yes, thank you. Okay. So we have our M, right? Now we have to go figure out our B. So we're gonna go and we're gonna grab and copy this work we did for B up here. And for solving the next two spots. Because I, I don't I don't want to retype it. There we go. It went away. One second. Okay, the work I did for B and the work I did for the two extra spots. And then I'm gonna get rid of the stuff I don't need. Okay, I don't need this blue change of Y or the red one, doesn't matter. I don't need the blue line, right? I don't need this eight and 11 and stuff. Those are from the other problem. Okay, so I'm just, Grabbing what I already have, so I don't have to reinvent. Okay, I'm using the first figure number, which happens to be a figure number one, right? So my first X is a one, not a three. We said we're multiplying times four, figure one, and we said there are seven tiles there. Okay, we're multiplying our figure one and we said there's seven tiles there. Okay, so this is going to say seven, not eight. Because there were seven tiles in our figure one. This is not gonna say six. What is it gonna say? Four times one is We're not gonna be subtracting six from both sides. What are we gonna be subtracting from both sides? Because we don't need to subtract six. What are we subtracting from both sides? Four. So this says seven take away four will get me what my B is. So what am I, what's my B? I have seven and I take four away. What do I get? Seven, take four away. What do we get? Three. So my B is three because seven, take four away is three. My M was four. My B is three. So I'm going to go change up. Everywhere there was a three before, it's changing to a four. Everywhere there was a two, that's changing to a three. So it matches our equation. But which figure numbers did they want this time? Not one and five. Which figure numbers did they want? Zero and four, yes. So we have to remember to change up the figure number as well. If I do the math, four times zero is still zero last time I checked. So there would be how many tiles in the zero figure when we finish the math? How many tiles in that zero figure when we finish the math of zero plus three? What's zero plus two? Oh. This one, four times four is not 15. What's four times four? Sixty. And our B was not two, it's three. 
So what's our final answer for this one? Y equals what? Y equals what? Do the math. 19. So there would be three tiles in figure zero. Oh, zero. And 19 tiles in figure four. Okay, both those are important. Simplify the following expressions. We've done this before. What would be our first step? What's our first step? To simplify this expression. I think it still uses the same order of operations. So what would parentheses, but what's the fancy word for this type of parentheses that we have to go this with? Because that's what we're doing for this one. Not cleaning up the parentheses inside, handling the parentheses outside. And what number is technically hiding in front of this parentheses after the minus sign? What number is always there, but we don't necessarily write it? One. So this is saying negative one. One second, easy. And the parentheses means multiply. So negative one times both those pieces. Distribution. Distributed property. I'm gonna fix this one. I don't like it. I have to write it better. So this says negative one times four and negative one times two x. It does not say five with anything yet. It does not say six X with anything yet. So those stay just like they did for the other ones that we had to simplify. Now I have a negative one that's multiplying times four and a negative one that's multiplying times two X. We've seen this before. And this is actually a positive two X. Are my six X and five gonna be doing anything? No, so we write them again. But that negative one times four and the negative one times positive two X, those are changing to what? What's a negative one times a positive four get us? What's a negative one times a positive four get us? What's a negative one times a positive four get us? Thank you, negative four. What's a negative one times a positive two X get us? Negative two X, thank you. Okay, the parentheses is done. And now we look at same things. We need to pull together our X pieces. Why are you being weird like that? One minute, it's being glitchy. Oh, I have to pick this one. <laughs> okay, okay. Sorry. Our X pieces, including their signs, and our number pieces, including their signs, color code it. 
Been a long time since you dealt with these. Always letters first. So pull together, 6x minus 2x, what would we get? Six X minus two X, what would we get? Four X. And then we have a positive five with a negative four. What would we get? Positive one. It's done. There's no way to solve it. There is no equal sign. This is not an equation, this is an expression. They just wanted you to make it look simpler. That's it. So this one's the same process. We know that there's a negative one hiding right here. We know I have to multiply the negative one times each piece in the parentheses. I am not changing the four. I'm not changing the plus X. I am doing negative one times four X and negative one times positive seven. Distribution. This was from way back like chapter one. Cleaning up. Is the four changing? Is the first X changing? Is anything happening with those? No, so we just write them down, four plus X. Then we do the math, negative one times four X. Negative four X. Negative one times positive seven. Negative seven. Color code, the matching pieces. My X is together, including their sign. My numbers together, including their sign because we know the same colors get pulled together using our rules. So this is saying a positive X with a negative four X. What would happen if we do that? A positive X with a negative four X. What would we have if we do that? Yep, negative three X, exactly. Okay, and then we have a positive four with a negative seven. What would we have? Negative three, and it's done. We cannot solve. It did not say solve. It said to simplify. We can't solve because there's a letter and no equal sign. Okay? We're describing what this graph is telling us is going on. So we need form, we need direction. We need to know is it, is it, what is it about? So what form is it taking? Linear or nonlinear? Linear or nonlinear? Linear. This is a linear relationship. Now we have to put a word in front of linear to tell what kind of linear, which direction. Which direction is the linear going? Is it going negative or is it going positive? Positive. So this is a positive linear relationship because now, what are the two pieces that are being talked about? Okay, what are the two pieces that are being talked about? What two things are being mentioned on the graph?
what two things are being mentioned on the graph. Okay, number of cars and the age of the owner. Now, what are the number of cars doing? Increasing or decreasing or staying the same? Okay, because as the number of cars owned increases, what happens? <clears throat> as the number of cars owned increases, what else is increasing? Ah. The age of the owner increases. Done, they just wanted you to describe it, that's all. No, try again. There we go. And then I gotta go do this little thing. I've learned how to do this. No, I want the circle. See? I'm getting it. <laughs> Oops. Some of this problem is down here. No wonder I couldn't find it. <laughs> so we're just going to go trash all this. If you, I'm just going to highlight it and trash it all at once. That makes so much sense, huh? Yay. Okay. Decide which graph best fits the following description. So we're deciding which one and why. The age, a child's age and the size of their feet. Is that gonna be a positive relationship? A negative relationship? No relationship or a constant relationship? Because this first one's positive. That means as age go up, size of feet go up. This one's negative. As age goes up, feet go down. No relationship. The size of the feet has nothing to do with how old you are. Or constant relationship. Everyone, no matter how old they are, have the same size foot. Which one of those makes the most sense? As the age of the child goes up, does the shoe size grow, get smaller, have nothing to do with the age, or everyone has the same shoe size? So from when we're born, oh, it grows. Yeah, because when we're born, our feet are like this big, right? But now our, our feet are not that big. My feet, not this big. So as the age goes up, the size of the shoe goes up. Now, obviously at a certain point, it levels off, we know. But they're not talking about that. They're just talking in general. So which graph is the best choice to show that as we grow, our feet grow too? I. So we're gonna go answer it. The best, no, the graph. That best fits the age of, oh, the child's age and the size of his or her feet is, and I'm going to put quotes around it, I, because why did we say? As a child grows their feet. Right. Yeah. Okay, that one's done. Let me do more. Now the homework, since this is review, some of it'll be like this, 
Some of it will be like notes we already took a different day. Do not automatically assume that the homework questions completely match the practice questions because we're reviewing, okay? What are the new coordinates of A, B, and C after you translate three, two units left and three units down? So first thing we need coordinates. We need what is A, what is B, and what is C right now? Someone tell me A, someone tell me B, someone tell me C. Put it in the chat. Someone tell me A's coordinates, someone tell me B's coordinates, and someone tell me C's coordinates. Put it in the chat with its letter. A is at zero, one. Someone else, do another letter. We have A done. We need a B and C still. We need B, we need C. Come on, guys. We're so close and I'd like to be able to get going on the homework with you guys, like we've been doing. What's B, what's C? B is three, four. What's C? Four, three. Okay. All right. So we have A, B, and C, and now we have to do the math to move them. And they told us three units left. So what is that going to do to our coordinates? We're finding A prime. Remember, we talked about this. We're starting at zero comma one. And it tells us that we're supposed to two left. Is that going to be adding or subtracting if we're going left? Is that adding or subtracting if we go left? C is wrong. What should be four, two? Thank you. Five, two? Then. Is B wrong? No, okay, we got it, we got it, perfect, thank you. All right, back to the question I asked. If we go left, is that adding or subtracting? Subtract, so it says subtract two from the X, which was zero, right, comma, then it said we're supposed to take the Y number and do what? Down three. So the Y is at one. What does down three mean? Adding or subtracting? Is down adding or it's subtracting and it says three. So that's gonna get me my new coordinate of what? Zero, take away two, what would that be? One, take away three, what would that be? What's its new coordinate? Negative two comma negative two. Exactly. So we're gonna put that here. Huge space, negative two. Make it big. Negative two. Now, is the process for B and C going to change? No, what's changing, it's a coordinate, right? So we're gonna copy, we're gonna paste it twice. Because once for B and once for C, and I'm gonna go fix it up. This one's changing to B, and B was at three, four, so I have to change it to a three subtracting two and a 
four subtracting three and I get a new coordinate of what? Three subtracting two and four subtracting three. So what's my new coordinate? Do the math. Three subtracting two, four subtracting three. What would my new coordinate be? One comma one. I'll put it up there in a second. Now we have to look at C. C prime. We said five, two, right? We're still subtracting two. We're still subtracting three. What's our new coordinate? Five take away two, two take away three. What's our new coordinate? Five take away two comma, two take away three. What's that gonna be? Three, negative one. Okay, we did that before. Now we've got to go put these numbers in their spots. And I'm going to change these to be 16s because it makes more sense. This was a one, one, three, three. And the last one was a three, negative one. This having this here, I just wish they had just done A and made the line. So you could do the whole parentheses yourself because this is stressful. It's not lining up pretty. Unless OCD people, this is really bugging us. Okay, that one's done. One more and then we could just start our homework. <gasps> similar triangles. What's always the first thing we do on similar triangles or similar shapes at all? What's always the first thing we're gonna do for similar shapes? Anytime we see the word similar, what's the first thing we always, always do? Color code, yep. So we go get our line. We make sure it's a line, not a circle. <laughs> we want it about two and we wanna get colors. You do your own three colors cause it's three sided shape. But if it's a five-sided shape, it's five different colors, right? We did this last chapter. You just have to make sure if it's in the same location, it's the same color. So if it's left, both lefts are the same color. If it's bottom, both bottoms are the same color. Both right, same color, color coded. And then Didn't start where I have to. Okay, everybody should be done color coding because that's super easy. All right, so what's the next thing? They want us to find the scale factor. What's the next thing we have to do after we color code it? After we color code it, what's the next step we have to take? After we color code it, what's the next thing we have to do so we can move on to finding the scale factor? We've color coded, there's still a piece missing for us to go ahead and do scale factor. We just did it on the quiz Wednesday. We have to decide who's old and who's new. Mm -hmm. We have to decide who's old and who's new. 
So who are we going to have be old and who are we going to have be new? Or original and new, same thing. Okay, small is old and big is new, that's fine. Okay, small is old and big is new, that's fine. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna say original, not with that, I don't need numbers. Original and new. Okay, we're not solving for 8x, so we can pick any side we want to to do our calculation for scale factor, but we have to check it for all of them. We've done one of these before. So what makes scale factor? Scale factor equals what? How do we find scale factor? New divided by, let me do this as a number part, equation editor, equals new divided by original, right? So we have to check all three new divided by original and their, what side they are. So first, we're going to go look at left. So, new left divided by original left. So, what's the new? How? What numbers on the new left? What number is in the location that's on the left of the new one? No, because new has, um, we decided new is the big one. Okay, new is the big one. Left is your not eating hand for the most of us. So what numbers on the new, on the left side of it? That's my color green, that's left. So what numbers in the new on the left? Oh, 12. And same location for the original is what? That's why we color code, same location for the original. What number is there? Six, then we simplify. What do we get? Do the math, what do we get? Two. Okay, the process is going to be the same, but we got to go do all the other sides. So I'm going to make a copy and I'm going to paste it. <clears throat> I have to do right. I have to do bottom. Who do we want to do now? Do we want to do the right or do we want to do the bottom? Doesn't matter which one because we're going to do them all. We're just changing this word left to be either right or bottom. Which do we want? <clears throat> Bottom. Okay. So, got to change this one to say bottom as well. Both have to say the same thing. What is on the bottom of the new? Twenty. Thank you. 
what is on the bottom of the original. Okay, did it simplify to the same answer? Yes, so we get to move on. Copy and paste it again. But now we have to do right. So now we got to change it to say right. New. What number is there? What number is on the right side of the new? Which is the color blue on my screen? Because we already did the green one. So we need the blue one. 16. Okay, what's on the right of the original? Did it simplify to the same thing? Yes. Now, if it makes it easier on you, instead of saying left, bottom, right, if you want to say the color, so if you wanted to say, instead of left, you wanted to say, oops, green. So you could, instead of left, be my guest. So that you can remember which one you've done. If you wanna say red instead of bottom, or whatever yours is. If you wanna say blue instead of right. If you wanna say the same color on both levels instead of the location on both levels, that is fine, okay? Because I kind of feel like some of you are getting stuck on left, right. Okay, so we have to answer their question. The scale factor. for these two similar triangles is two. Now, what does that mean, scale factor two? What did scale factor mean again? Scale factor meant we're multiplying, right? So does it make sense that we're saying that we took the original and multiplied by two? Because that's what that would mean. Our original was the small one. We multiplied by two to get the new one. Now, would we have done something wrong if we'd chosen the big one to be original and the small one to be new? No, that's an equally valid way, okay? The only difference is it flips it over because you're now going from a big to a small, it would have been half. But both are equally acceptable answers. The only time it's not equally acceptable is if they tell you who is new and who is old. Like we had on one of our worksheets where it told us the scale factor of big to small, okay? So we had to do it, big was the original, small was the new, okay? So if they tell you which one is the new and the original, or they put it in words, big to small, they mean that the first one's the original, the second one's the new, okay? All right, so save, turn in both here and in the Google Classroom. I wanna look over the homework with you. We aren't gonna be able to solve, but I wanna look over and remind you where to go looking in your notes, okay?